Hi, I'm a field applications engineer with LDRA, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the productivity package for rail transportation, and more specifically, how we can use it to gain compliance with EN 50128. Let's go in and take a look at some of the different requirements for this standard. The different testing requirements for EN50128 are going to vary based on the SIL level that you're trying to gain compliance with. So if we start with static analysis, we can see that for SIL level 0, it's not required. But for SIL levels 1, 2, 3, and 4, it is required, and you'll need to provide some documentation for that. For code coverage, we can see that for SIL level 0, it's only going to require statement coverage. Uh, but for SIL levels 1 and 2, statement and branch coverages are going to be required. And then for SIL levels 3 and 4, it's also requiring MCDC coverages on top of the statement and branch decision coverages. Next up is regression testing, also known as unit testing. For SIL 0, this is not required. It's completely optional. But for SIL levels 1 and 2, it's actually highly recommended or required depending on if you are SIL level 1 or SIL level 2. And for SIL levels 3 and 4, of course, it's completely mandatory. There's no way around it there. For the testing environment, for SIL level 0, you can just get away with testing on your host machine and your IDE. That's completely fine. For SIL levels 1 and 2, uh, again, you can test on a simulator or on a target depending on which SIL level you're at. For SIL level 3 and 4, you can only test on target, so that is the limiting factor there. Lucky for us, this rail productivity package from LDRA actually has a comprehensive set of tools to meet all of these requirements at any SIL level you're trying to go for. And this is very, very handy for having all of these solutions under one set of tools. This is going to help you to internally standardize your documentation. It's going to streamline your time to compliance. And ultimately, the end goal is to save you money by not having to go out and buy five different sets of tools for five different purposes. So let's go jump into LDRA and we'll take a look at how some of these tools work and how they can help you gain compliance with your standard. The first thing you'll want to do when you open LDRA after importing your code is going to be running some static analysis. So first I'll want to select the standard model that I'm going to run my analysis against. LDRA has over 30 different coding standards available in the rail transportation package. And you can also mix and match and create your own standards if you need to add any specific rules or anything custom needs to happen for you to make this work. Uh, for me, in this scenario, I'm going to be running against the CERT C 2016, 2016 standard. And I've actually already ran the static analysis. So we can right click and open up our code review to see all of our violations on the right hand side here. So now I have all of these violations. This is great. The next thing that I may want to do is actually exclude one of these violations. Let's say one of them doesn't really apply to me and I simply don't need it. For example, let's take a look at this use of numeric literal expression 0U. It is a LDRA phase code of 201S and it applies to this CERT C2016 rule. If I want to exclude this, I can simply right click and I can go to violation exclusions and then I have my option to exclude just this one violation, all of that type of violation in a function, file or system. So we can do that. I'll exclude this individual violation and you can see that it's actually gone now. If I scroll up to the top, I can right click and hit show violation exclusion. And now we can see that it's grayed out here in our code review. The next thing that we'll want to do is actually see where all of these violations occur. So if I take any of these violations and simply double click on it, it's going to do two things. It's going to open up in whatever code browser I've selected. In this case, it's going to be Notepad++, but you can set this to be whatever IDE or text editor you choose, and it will highlight the line of the violation. This will also show up in the bottom source viewer down here where the log window usually is. And we can see the violation in line with our code. The next thing you'll want to do is likely going to be some dynamic analysis to get some code coverage information. And there are multiple ways of doing this, from doing it on the host, to a simulator, to running it on target. 
And LDRA has the option to do all three of these. Uh, if you purchase what's called a target license package, this allows LDRA to connect to any simulator or target board you choose. You just have to specify which one you want. Um, in our case, we're just going to be running on the host because it's very simple and quick to do. We can run this on the MinGW compiler just by clicking the dynamic analysis button. As long as this code compiles, we can see that our code is popping up here. All right, so our analysis is now finished, so we can right click on our set and we'll take a look at all of our code coverage now. And we can see that we've got code coverage for statement and branch decision coverage, but we're lacking quite a bit on our modified condition decision coverage or MCDC coverage. This is because we haven't entered in any kind of test case or any specified inputs and outputs. We just did some random inputs to see what we could get. And we can add on to this coverage if we want by simply running some unit tests in our software for unit testing called TB Run. So to run some test cases in TB Run, we'll have to bring all of these results over first. So to do that, I'll right click and I'll hit Start TB Run Interactively. And this is going to bring over all of our set information into TB Run, which again is our unit testing software. And again, this will work with any target license package that you want. If you need to do unit testing on target or on simulator, that's completely fine here. And to see all of our coverage information, all I have to do is create a sequence. And now I can simply switch my code into white box mode. And now we can see all of the same code coverage that we've gathered beforehand if I expand any of these functions. Now, if I want to run some test cases on, say, for example, this function user interface parse, one thing that I can obviously do is I can right click and I can create a new test case, give it some valid inputs and outputs and run that test case and see if it passes or fails. Alternatively, you can also import test cases from, from an existing file, which is what I've done here. So I have five test cases imported here with all of their appropriate user inputs gathered. And we're going to run these five test cases and see if they pass and gain us some coverage. All right, so we can see that our five test cases have in fact passed, and we did actually gain some MCDC coverage here, which went up to 100%. We can also see that for our current coverage run, we got 45% statement coverage and 22% branch coverage, which did actually increase the statement and branch decision coverage. If I want full 100% coverage on both statement and branch decision, I'm gonna have to run some more test cases to do that. But with the 100% modified condition decision coverage here, we can check that off our list and say that we are compliant with the MCDC requirement for EN5128, SIL level three or four, which is very handy. Thanks for watching my short presentation on the LDRA productivity package for rail transportation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at LDRA.com and hit the subscribe button to see more videos just like this one. Thanks again and have a nice day.